On today's show, we recap LSU's road trip to Georgia and talk about the football team's season going forward. And later on, we're calling an audible as Patrick Clay fills in for Charlton Wilson with his eyes on NOLA this week. You're at the Sports Desk, and it starts right now. Welcome to the Sports Desk. I'm Rachel Orchlinski. And I'm Morgan Beard. And now, Morgan, let's get right to it. There was a big top 10 SEC match this weekend, you know, LSU and Georgia. Tell yeah. me a little about it. I don't it. know if uh, anyone out there has heard <laughs> about that, but that's right, Rachel. LSU came into Saturday's game with a perfect 4-0 record, fresh off their first SEC win against Auburn the week prior. But the Tigers had to travel to Athens to face the number 9 ranked Georgia Bulldogs for their first road test of the year. And on Georgia's first drive, we start with Aaron Murray, Murray throwing it deep to 20 yards for uh, Arthur Lynch. Um, establishing their passive dominance that you see throughout the day. And right after that, Aaron Murray sets up an easy five-yard touchdown to Michael Bennett, giving Georgia the first lead of the game. But right after this, the LSU offense shows their ability to respond, something they couldn't do in prior years, as Zach Mettenberger connects with Cajun Boone for his touchdown, a 48-yard variety. Um, that's his first of the year, but his second came a little bit after that, putting LSU at 14-7. That didn't last long as Aaron Murray throws his second touchdown of the day, making it a full-blown shutout. But now we fast forward to the fourth quarter, LSU down three with four to go. Jeremy Hill runs it in for the seven yard touchdown, his first and only of the game. But it was a little too much to overcome as Georgia on the last drive of the game scores from another Aaron Murray touchdown and Zach Mettenberger drops his uh, first game back in Georgia against head coach Mark Rick. And now head coach Ellis, uh, Les Miles discussed the mindset of the quarterback as, the, as he faced his old team in Georgia. Think about the emotion that must have been going through that young man's mind. What he did is he put on the back burner his personal views and what were important to him and said, no, what's important to me is, is that I play quarterback for the Tigers and I do a great job and do everything I can to help us win, and he did. Now, as always, a big-time SEC matchup had huge implications in the polls, and LSU Georgia was certainly no exception this week. Now, as you can see in the rankings, Alabama is still sitting pretty uh, at number one with 55 first-place votes, and Oregon coming around in second place with two, with five uh, first-place votes. But as, as you can see, LSU dropped to number 10, switching places with Georgia um, as they rise to number six. Now, Rachel, are there anything that stands out to you in these rankings? Do you agree, disagree? What do you think? Um, what stands out to me is that we are last, and I don't agree with that, yeah. <laughs> obviously, that LSU is last. Um, I think Georgia did really well against LSU Saturday night, but I don't believe that that should have pushed them yeah. that far high. That's just my personal opinion. Just because the game was so close, I don't think it was worth them going so And we'll high. see exactly how the rest of the season shapes up. The Tigers have a lot of time to, you know, rise up in the rankings. But Rachel. Alrighty, well on to soccer. For the first time in two weeks, LSU soccer played home last Friday for the SEC home opener against uh, the Tennessee Lady Volunteers. So we have uh, Emma Fletcher scored a goal with a 25-yard free kick in the 31st minute, giving the Tigers a 1-0 lead going into the half. Tennessee scored in the second half, tying the game 1-1. The Tigers ended a double overtime with no additional goals by either team. In total, each team attempted 18 shots during the match, with LSU leading in shots on goal. This is what head coach Brian Lee had to say about the game. I thought it was a good college soccer game, a typical SEC, a uh, little bit run and gun uh, against a good team. I thought we played great, 10 shots on goal. You can't ask for much more than that and uh, created some really good chances. I like the way we're playing and uh, we keep doing that with that kind of effort. It's going to be a great team. The Tigers went on to play Mississippi State on Sunday, ending in a 3-2 double overtime win. This was the 12th game in a winning streak against Mississippi State since 2001. All right, thank you, Rachel. And after the first break, we'll come back with Sports Showtime producer Patrick Clay with his eyes on NOLA as we take a look at the Pelicans and some state's action. Don't want to miss it. Welcome back to the show. Now, instead of Charlton Wilson joining me this week, we'd like to welcome Sports Showtime producer Patrick Clay onto the show for this week's Eye on NOLA. Morgan, thanks for having me. No problem at all, Patrick. Patrick, you literally just got back from NOLA 
seriously, about a couple of hours ago yep. for the Pelicans Media Day. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, Morgan, uh, honestly, for the Pelicans Media Day, mm -hmm. it was a day of new. Uh, a new name, new faces, a new uniforms, and a new practice facility. It's obvious the New Orleans Pelicans are ready to carry this momentum into the season. And speaking of new faces, I got to talk to one of the Pelicans' newest additions from the offseason, seven-foot center Greg Steemsma, to get his thoughts about his new team and the new season. We're here with Greg Steams of the New Orleans Pelicans. First of all, Greg, welcome to New Orleans. You liking it so far? Yeah, thanks. Glad to be here. Um, it's been a fun city so far. Got used to this heat a little bit, but uh, but loving it so far. It's definitely different than up north, huh? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, hoping this city, hope, heard humidity, this humidity leaves a little bit, but we'll see. Well, uh, let's get right to it. Uh, you guys, there's a big center battle going into training camp that's starting soon, and uh, between you, Jason, uh, Jeff, even Anthony Davis, just talk about that battle that you guys are going to be facing this season. Uh, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Um, you know, I think competition brings the best out of everybody, so we're, we're definitely going to take it at each other and, uh, you know, try and get better every day. What was it that got you to come to New Orleans? Uh, Dell Dems' pitch to get you to come here, what, what made you think it would be a good fit? Um, I think just the opportunity to, to be a big part of this team. Um, you know, obviously with the, the center position kind of being open, um, looking to be a big role is, and step up into that role. And uh, just to be with a coach that's got a defensive mind at first and, uh, you know, being a part of an up-and-coming team. Uh, it's going to be a fun, young team to play, be a part of. You mentioned the style of play that you bring. It seems like there's going to be a bit of a block party in New Orleans. Yeah, I think uh, there's not going to be a lot of easy buckets here. That's that's for sure. And I think that's what we're that's what we're going to go for too. That's going to be our goal. Um, that's been my mentality for a long time. Is nothing easy in the paint, and we definitely got some guys that can block shots. Greg, uh, talk about just you're kind of one of the elder statesmen of this team. Um, you know, I'm not going to stretch too far and um, you know step out of what I need to be. You know, lead by I'm a lead by example kind of guy and. Just come in and work hard, and uh, guys seem to follow that. And then who knows? And you never know when you go from there. So um, we're looking to just be consistent all year, win the games we have to, or win the games at home, take over home court, and then uh, uh, win some, win a lot of games on the road, and we'll see, we'll see what happens. In two seasons, Steensma has averaged just under four points and 15 minutes per game. Now, today's media day also marked the first time Pelicans forward Ryan Anderson spoke to the media since the unfortunate passing of his girlfriend, Gia Alamond, who took her own life early last month. Anderson said being able to be back with his team has helped him through this difficult time. Even just coming here, you know, I, I'm really glad that Coach asked me to come back when he did. Um, I've been here for a few weeks now and just being around the guys and being back in the gym, just having some sort of a uh, routine back. Um, it helps a little bit. Now, obviously, our thoughts and condolences are with Ryan and the Alamon family at this time. Tough situation. I think you said it best. There's not really much else you can add to the situation other than we hope Ryan Anderson can get through it and uh, move forward with the season. But the show must go on. And since you're here talking about New Orleans, there's a big Monday night football game going on against the Dolphins. Patrick, what are your thoughts about the game? And can the defense, the Saints, do what they've done the past three weeks and shut out the Dolphins like they've been doing to every, every other team? You know, honestly, Morgan, every time this defense has stepped up mm -hmm. this season, it surprised me. The interception late in the game against the Falcons, uh, the sh basically shut out of the Cardinals after that early touchdown. It just it's, um, amazes me every time. I don't think Ryan Tannehill has seen anything like how this Saints defense has performed, this very young Saints defense. They have the legs. They have the energy to keep up with the Miami offense. It's been able to spread the field a little bit. I think it won't be a problem for the Saints. Now, do you think it's going to rely all on Ryan Tannehill, or do you think running backs like Lamar Miller can finally get you know his legs underneath him and do something to the Saints defense? Well, that's the one thing the Saints defense has still allowed is a lot of running yards. You saw Tampa Bay, Martin gave a lot of yards, so I think he'll be able to, but the Dolph Dolphins offense won't be much of an issue. All right, well, thanks for the inside scoop on New Orleans, Patrick. Maybe we'll see you later uh, this year in the show. Hope so. All right, well, Patrick, thanks again. Um, uh, don't go anywhere. Sports Showtime will be right back to close out the show. Welcome back to the Sports Desk. Now, in other sports, kind of, the Los Angeles Clippers revealed today a set of new alternate uniforms for the upcoming season. Can we get a picture of that up there? There they are, the bright baby blue. Oh, I do like those. With the sleeves. Rachel, what do you think of those sleeves, first of all? I like it. I mean, something different. You know, it might be a little sweaty, though. Exactly. But I know before, air, before we started airing today, seeing that picture got you rolling on uh, what you think the worst uniforms of all time are. And we compiled her top three, starting with... The Boston Celtics? Is that right, Rachel? It is right. That is right, Morgan. You know, I'm really not into the whole green and white thing, but it's really not even the color that throws me off. The color's interesting. I like the difference, but, like, it reminds me of Lucky Charms, like the big clover thing. You don't thing. like Lucky Charms? I mean, does that not... No. 
Okay. I mean, I, okay, I mean, you know, to each his own. I know a lot of people would you know, disagree with that, but it's okay. <laughs> now it's time for number two. It's another questionable call, <laughs> but the Texas Longhorns. Now, you're not liking the burnt orange? Of yeah, the that, now, the problem here is the color. I don't have a problem with their logo, but the color, like, why burnt orange? Like, why not regular orange? I mean, I see what they're trying to do, but I, no, it's silly to me. As a resident of Oklahoma, I just got to say Boomer right. Sooner, by the way. And, Rachel, your number one worst all-time uniform, what is that? Uh, Alabama's a Crimson Tide. Of now that course, I, can I mean, agree I don't with. need to say much about that. It's just awful all the way around. That's all. Okay, all right. Rachel, I'm glad we got that done. <laughs> now, guys, that's all the time we have for this show. Make sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter for the latest news at TTV, TTV underscore sports. You can catch us again next week at 6 p.m. right here on Campus Channel 7, uh, 75. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week. For Rachel Romanowski, I'm Morgan Beard. <laughs> have a great night.